In today's clean... Welcome to another clean with us. Today we're deep cleaning the kitchen. I know we're the tidy two, but we're definitely not the deep clean two. This is um, something that we preach all the time about no shame cleaning. And today you're going to see a lot of vulnerability in me as we clean my kitchen, which I have not done in probably years. No time for shame. We've got a big list ahead of us. If you guys want to see a copy of our deep cleaning the kitchen checklist, we'll have a link available in the description below. And throughout the video, we'll explain what we're doing and have a little caption on there as well to say what part of the kitchen we're cleaning and why. We're going to be talking about our general guide and how normally we do left to right, top to bottom. However, when there's time sensitive materials like letting chemicals sit in the oven or getting a load of dishes done because you're going to need another load done soon, we're going to start with those two things first. For anyone who hasn't visited our channel before, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you coming to check up on our kitchen. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Lana. And I'm Laura. And we're two identical twins who love to clean and tidy. And we do deep clean occasionally. Tell us in the comments below, what was the last thing that you deep cleaned? A pool noodle, really? How? I don't even know how that got up there. This will be our first magic eraser shout out of the video. You'll see plenty more of them. I can totally see why people ignore deep cleaning because it does oftentimes come off as discouraging and more messy when you get started. But it's so important to tackle all of this dust and grime that comes from your oven. We had to get this done. I find that toothpicks and Q-tips can work really well for small crevices and cracks. However, be careful, this is a refrigeration seal and so you don't want to damage that. I can see why people are intimidated to take a light fixture off by themselves. This one required three screws, so it really wasn't that hard. I do recommend having a friend with you, just a, a partner, a friend, someone that you can hand the light fixture to or to help you down from your step stool or ladder. Having the cover off allowed me to do a really detailed dusting and to actually wash the light fixture in the sink, the glass part, so that I was able to give it more detail. If you are unable to take down your light fixture, I would definitely recommend some compressed air and a damp cloth. I 
forgot to film cleaning the outside of the upper cabinets, but we just used pledge for this. We actually prefer Sprayway to Windex. It smells really good and definitely leaves no streaks behind. I have never moved my oven to clean behind it and it is very clear but once we start tackling this and giving it a good scrub it's gonna look so much better This next shot is the kind of cleaning that I love to do. Oh, that is so satisfying to be able to make something that was incredibly dirty, extremely clean again. For the inside of this oven, we used Easy Off. Again, we followed the instructions. It says that you can leave, let it sit for an hour up to eight hours. I think we were somewhere right in the middle and look how smoothly that came off. We just used uh, paper towels for this. If we used a scratch pad, I think we could have gotten it perfectly, but you can see that we just got the door, the sides and the bottom is the most satisfying thing you'll see all day. Oh, did we mention that this is highly toxic? We definitely had the windows open. This is one of the least favorite parts of my kitchen. I hate my sink. I It, it just doesn't clean. I don't know what to say. We've tried everything. Um, Laura here is scrubbing so hard and in the end she makes it look a lot better, but I just want a new sink. We used an all natural cleaner called the Pink Stuff and we followed the directions. It asked for us to use a soft cloth or sponge. Ultimately, I do end up pulling out a scrub daddy because I could see that the sponge was not doing enough, but even at the end of this, this right side of the sink is improved, but it has this stain and, you know, yeah, maybe on the Christmas list, maybe Lana can get a new sink. We're going to work on that.
pledge on the lower parts of the cabinets as well. Make sure to spray directly on the cloth and not the cabinets as it can damage the color of your cabinets depending on the material of your cabinets. Also, for those of you who don't follow our TikTok, you definitely should because we're doing a 30 day, 30 bag challenge where we're decluttering our homes, trying to get rid of some stuff. So we worked under the sink to try to make it look clean and organized. We bought these containers from Walmart. They are from the home edit and they're about $6 each. Okay, it's time to clean the microwave and it's actually not too bad at all. And we're gonna do a little trick here. We're gonna take this bowl, fill it with hot soapy water and we're gonna see some magic at work. Just a little bit of soap here, some water. Don't even need that much. And then we're just gonna microwave it for 30 seconds to a minute. All right, we're gonna use a paper towel to clean this mess. Normally we would use a washcloth or even a sponge or abrasion pad. However, we wanna show how easy these messes clean once you microwave the, the water and have that soap and steam kind of in the microwave. So um, it actually comes off fairly easily. So you gotta take out the plate at some point. Hand wash that or you can wash it in the dishwasher. Awesome. Can't forget the door. Okay, let's take a, a cloth or a paper towel and we're just gonna wipe this out and it's gonna look like a new microwave. When we did a deep clean of my kitchen a couple months back and bought the new refrigerator, you helped me design and organize the whole thing, and I appreciated that, so I feel a little bad that I wasn't there for you. No, 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 it's fine. I ended up getting this done. There's actually not a lot to do, because even though it was a little grimy, it actually wasn't bad at all. I know that you already had a basic structure that you kind of used for your refrigerator where things went. Did you change anything in this cleanup? No, it mostly just decluttered a couple of things that were maybe expired or gross, but everything in this fridge is set up kind of the way we want it with milk on the top with eggs, sauces and cheeses in the middle, some snacky foods in the next drawer, then meat, and then finally in the bottom, we have our veggies and beer. Two very important food groups. I'm not gonna lie, I really tried to cut corners here. Uh, my original plan was not to take out any of the condiments at all um, and, and just kind of deal with it. But as I started going through the project, I realized that I did have to remove all the glass and all the condiments and all the sides in order to make this refrigerator really nice and clean. 
and a deep clean does not have to be perfect it's just that when you have all that stuff pulled out you might as well do as thorough of a clean as you can but time is always against us so we completely understand that not every single speck is going to be clean you just do what you can Well, that's a new one. A vacuum in the refrigerator? I had to get the chromies. We eat a lot of salads in our home, and I haven't found a great way to store our vegetables other than just throwing them in the drawer. So if anybody has suggestions, put it in the comments below because I'm always open to new organization. Everybody rants and raves about the scrub daddy, but I totally get it. I actually prefer them to the green scratch pads. Uh, it just cleans really, really well. Every once in a while though, I gotta break out the big tools and here I had to use a butter knife because there were some really sticky things on the bottom that nothing was really working for. And you can see she is not using her you know, entire strength to get this grime off. She's just giving it a little bit of a, a scrape and it is really important because the inside of your refrigerator is often very sensitive. So you do not want to get a, a hole or, or a scratch in there as it can mess up the entire refrigeration of your refrigerator. So again, me trying to take shortcuts here. We had made a huge dinner and I wasn't feeling good, so I didn't do the dishes in the sink before I started cleaning out the refrigerator. And definitely a big mistake because I just basically spent the entire time trying not to break glass. So I did this on Friday night when our grocery trip is typically on Sundays. And so basically I'm just taking a quick inventory of what we have so that I know what to add to the grocery list for the weekend. is really important and I noticed that my girls will not just eat grapes out of the bag they have to have their own little what we call snack attack packs so we use these to put carrots and cucumbers and tomatoes in mentioned the baseboards before and it's because honestly they are really important there are scuff marks and food grime all down there and you will be surprised what a magic eraser or wet washcloth can pick up we've mentioned before that many professional cleaners charge extra for baseboards and they make a really big difference in a room so take the extra time to scrub because it's definitely worth it
be very careful when you are trying to scrape gum or stickers or anything off the floor. I really should have used baking soda and vinegar on this first or even an industrial cleaner like Goof Off, but I didn't. Uh, I used this uh, metal scraper and that's a really good way to scratch your floors. So please be careful. I did not scratch the floors here, Lana. Don't worry, her eyes got so big, but I just want everyone to uh, be aware. When that broom and dustpan come out, you know it's coming towards the end of our video. My kitchen desperately needed deep cleaned. I haven't deep cleaned this thing in years, and as much work as I put into decorating and cleaning, it's important to put in an equal amount of work to the deep clean. This clean could not wait until after the holidays because my kitchen deserves to be clean and I deserve to have a clean kitchen. I always love these dirty kind of cleans with the grime and the grit, and I'm grateful that you let me be part of it, and I'm grateful to these guys for watching us, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and that you were motivated to clean your kitchen or whatever part of your house you need clean today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our channel for tons of videos and cleaning motivation. And if you truly enjoy watching us clean, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. You wanna know what we're cleaning next. Check out our TikTok for awesome videos that are fun and also look at our new challenge that we're trying out, 30 day, 30 bag challenge. Check out the description of this video for the products we use, music, and other videos. Please let us know in the comments below, what should we clean next?